Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck, with me, Frank Baltieres. And as I bake myself in the sun to deliver a video for you guys, because I'm trimming away at my ceiling, which is a white aluminum piece. I'm not the biggest expert when it, cut, when it comes to cutting aluminum, because I've only used stainless steel and I've only used FRP. So I use my cutoff wheel and I have all these little, these little furs on here they have to do this dangerously dangerous job and take my utility knife and like scrape all this off. I know there's gotta be like a better way to cut this aluminum, but by the time you guys comment on this video, I'll be done and I'm not gonna build, an I'm not gonna build another trailer. So Big Red is my last trailer that I'm building, the one that I'm showing you guys right now. And this, as I mentioned, is my ceiling that I'm working on. And in today's video, that's what we're gonna be covering, the ceiling. Uh, I'm gonna cover a little bit about the outlets again. If you guys had any questions, not too much but we're kind of just moving around on the on the trailer, making sure that I finish it fast. This is gonna be like a record speed of build. Hopefully I get it done in the next two weeks because we're gonna do the plumbing, we're gonna be doing the gas, we're gonna be installing the tables, and then it's gonna be up for sale. If you guys are interested, send me an email, rollingburritosfoodtruck at gmail.com. Now let me just make sure I watch all my fingers so I end up with 10 of them. And as I remove all this debris of this white aluminum, so I can install this piece. Again, Frank Valtieres, how to build your food truck. Thanks again for commenting. Thanks again for subscribing, for sharing the videos. Now let's get to it. And I know you guys can build your own trailer. So just watch these videos and you guys can do it as well. I need my step stool here because this trailer is so big and the height wise inside, I am not even close to being a seven footer, but this is seven feet from bottom to the top. And coming back from Florida, I'm getting ready to just like haul butt here and complete this trailer. I did get my white aluminum sheets delivered today. I have three of them that I'm going to use on this ceiling. So I'm going to be working on that in the next two days. Today I'm going to install as much as I can on this side on full sheets. And then I'm going to go over here to partials. But this is what I have going on right now. As you guys can see my ceiling right now, it's plywood. This is... 3 16th or quarter inch plywood that I installed myself because I wanted to have a backing for the white aluminum because it's so flimsy. I just want to have something for it to uh, have some support on there. So I'm going to use glue adhesive and then I'm going to put it on there. But that's what I have going on. Just wanted to show you that I'm a little bit of a shorty guy. <laughs> um, not really, just kind of average. But uh, I'm going to use my step stool here because I cannot reach the top. So let's get moving. That's how it looks as of right now. And in a few hours, it will not look like that anymore. So there's the final view. I did try using these aluminum shears that I found. However, maybe it's just user error, but I was not having any luck. So I went back to using the four and a half, four and a half inch cutoff wheel that I am using now. Well, let's see what we have here. Look at this. We got the white aluminum ceiling in place i have one piece this is a four by ten sheet that i bought it's white aluminum and as you can see here i have my screws on there i'm actually going to put washers just like that on all these little spots i just literally wanted to set it up here that way it's nice and ready for me to align it install it and put glue behind it so that's what i did this is my wiring for my light that i'm going to put there i have an eight foot strip light that I'm gonna put all along there, nice and bright. And then I just made sure that I aligned this part right here so then that way I don't have to put a trim piece. I'll probably just caulk a little bit right there, just a little slight caulk. And it'll be nice and neat and look really nice. Uh, what else do I have here? I'm, I'm gonna be working on this electrical box because I need to finish it up. Again, just to cover it, one of them is my home run. One of them is my outside light. One of them is the power. This one's the power that goes to the other side, which is right over there. And then the other one's the outside switch leg, which is the rope lights, which that gets connected to it. So I'm gonna connect these two, being the outside switch legs, to one outlet, which is gonna go right here. And then these two, the home run and the power, that's gonna get connected to this other outlet. So this one's always gonna have power. This one's gonna run on a switch leg, so it controls the lights outside because that's gonna get plugged in because that's my rope light. So just wanna make sure that I cover that for you. So this is on one outlet, this is on another outlet because it's gonna be a switched outlet because that switch right there controls the lights. So there we go, just wanted to give you the update 
on how that piece turned out. Again, it's just temporary. I use my zip walls because they are handy dandy little critters right there to hold this up and install it. So let me work on this part and all that back piece. Quick video update right here. I installed this other part right here. I did have a helping hand because everything in the ceiling is very hard to do by yourself because you have to align it. And besides the helping hand, I did have the third helping hand, which is the zip walls that you see right there. So I have this piece in now, which is the left side, which is the driver side. This is the passenger side. I just kind of divide it like that. And I use my hood almost as a divider. And I always have that little piece right there where I put a strip. That's kind of just how my uh, layout is of my ceiling. Yours might be a little bit different. What I'm gonna do next is install this strip light that I have in this box that you see right here, where it says fragile, fragile. I don't know how you say that, fragile. And that's an eight foot strip light, LED, integrated LED. I'm gonna change it up. I'm not using can lights on this one. Let's see if I like this better. But I'm gonna install that right there, right now. And that's what I'm doing next. I wanted to cover one thing on the lights here, uh, just so you guys know how to connect them. Again, this is an eight footer. It just has the separation right here on the four foot part. So it looks like it has actually two lights, but it's actually one full fixture from left right there all the way over here. It stops right there, that's eight feet. And then from there to there, that's another four footer. And how you connect these are pretty straightforward. You kind of have to just squeeze right here, trying to do it with one hand. So excuse the slowness, you kind of squeeze. And then it has the ballast there, it has an LED ballast. Let me flip that light over so you guys can see. And then right there is a Romex that comes from my lights, from my switch. And then there, all you do is you connect the switch leg the black wire with the black wire from the ballast you see there and then the neutral the white one goes to the neutral of the ballast and then the ground goes to the ground screw right there what i like about these lights this is why i started using them and i, I think i like them a lot is it helps support the roof a little bit so if you guys have like frp or even this white aluminum since it goes across you guys can see it grabs a couple studs let me see if i can go over here so you guys can see it it grabs a couple studs right there on the left and on the right. So that helps support like this aluminum. So it's a, it's a nice uh, anchor piece. So that's why I like them. But the straightforward wiring of it is, is, is there. It's just black being the switch light and the white being the neutral. So I want to make sure I added this in so you guys know how I installed these lights. Pretty, pretty easy. So there you go. That's what I did. It was an eight footer, four footer. And then up here, I'm still waiting for my two footer. So let's move on to the trickiest part of the build. For me, I think it's the trickiest part. I would rather install a hood and a window than put, do this far, uh, front part of the trailer. This from here and this part right here get super tricky because there's a lot of cuts and you wanna make it look nice. I'm very perfectionist, so to speak, where I like to make everything where there's no big gaps on here. So I, I'm, I'm saving the best for last, as they call it. So right here we have all these moldings. When I built my original food truck, being rolling burritos, I didn't use any moldings because I was like, ah, you know what, it's gonna look good like that. But once I started using like all these transition pieces, these moldings on FRP, and they make them for stainless steel as well, it makes a huge difference. It just makes it look cleaner, nicer, and overall it's it's a really nice aesthetic look to the to the pieces here. But it gets tricky because you have to fit it inside that lip, you have to fit it inside this lip and at the same time make it transition like this. You see the curve down, make it curve down nicely. That way you don't scratch the FRP. And then over there in the corner, you try to kind of do the curvature of the trailer. If yours is like that, mine has a curve on it. Yours could be flat, which makes it even easier. But if it doesn't, this is where it gets a little tricky. On trucks, I think they're squared as well. So that's not bad. That's, that's really nice for you guys if you guys have like a square box. But there it is. That's what I'm working on next. That's going to take a little bit of time. If I can get this part done today, that for me is a success. So uh, just know that I also struggle when it comes to building. And I hope I didn't have to do this part. But it's what's next. So we're just going to move forward. We're going to push through it. Get it done. Cut the holes for the lights. Install the lights. This last piece. And then there's that last one over there on the ceiling. And then we're done with the ceiling. And then we'll move on to that last piece. And all that fun stuff. Hopefully you guys are keeping along. Let's just keep on moving for now. 
and this next part there is no working around it there is no shortcuts make sure that you measure everything two times three times if you have to get all these measurements correct i'm going to go around this window vent so it'll fit nicely whenever i put my window trim back on right there the little trailer vent that's the cover that goes on there and then obviously in the front all your pieces you want to make sure that you measure everything everything like double times triple times four times if you have to very important step measuring it just the shortcut that i found is just kind of right on the plywood and then that way you don't have to remeasure and uh, actually i did you know just to make sure look at that one eighth of an inch i just wanted to make sure that i move that over a little bit so accuracy is key in this part cutting the aluminum the ceiling stainless steel frp whatever you use on your ceiling make sure you measure two three four times if you have to that's my tip I can give you. Let me take a last video because if all my calculations are correct that I wrote down on the wall right there, that's my cheat sheet. And I suggest you guys do something like that where you mark all your measurements on the wall. That way you're not back and forth and then take a picture of it. This is the last time we're gonna see this front wall where all my sinks are going to go. My three compartment sink, water heater, uh, hand wash sink, and then the dish rack up there. This is the last time it's going to look like this. I need to add one more light right there if you guys can see the Romex. However, the lights that I have found, this is the strip lights that I'm using. The one that I found here and I brought was a 5,000 Kelvin, just like these, but it was a different brand and they lit up differently because of the ballast. So now I gotta find another one like this one. A Lithonia is the brand up here and it's a 5,000 Calvin is the color. Beautiful color. Woo, man, I did a couple adjustments. One of them is I was actually gonna run two pieces right here that were in this little molding, they call it the end cap, and I did not like how it looked. It looked, to be honest, like garbage, and I did not like the presentation of how it looked. I really like how these are, just one smooth end cap transition piece with that divider right there. So I switched it out completely all the way up from the top all the way to the bottom. Brand new end cap. And as you can see here, this is where I hate cutting the most. That's why I save it for last. You do have a little bit of gaps because it's almost impossible to fit a perfect um, piece right there. So if you can see there, I'll end up putting some caulking there. They call it extra stretch white caulking. I'll put that right there just to cover up and make that look nice and professional. Other than that, we are done with the inside of this trailer. Everything in the interior is done being the walls and being the ceiling, except for that little dangly lights that you see right there. Next up is gonna be the plumbing and the gas line is halfway done, to be honest. So the plumbing is next and that's it. It's ready to rock and roll. Any buyers, come on, I'm waiting for you. This is one of one. And once this one's gone, there will be no other ones. Look how nice it lights up at night with these strip lights. These are Lithonia's 5000 Calvin, which is a color. And this is an eight footer. That's a four footer. And then that front one's gonna be a two footer. But it looks real nice at night. Look at this, sharp, sharp, sharp. So there we go, that's it for tonight. As you can see, it was a little bit of a on off, but a long night. I just wanted to make sure I got all this done. I was actually going to stop and when I finished that ceiling, but I ended up doing those two pieces right there. So I'm glad I did it because now I'm done. One thing you want to make sure of before you finish up all your walls of FRP, I'll show you inside right now, that all your trailer lights are working. These are the top of the trailer lights, all your little side marker lights. There's one on that side as well. This one is just a reflector. Right here, we have the side marker light. Make sure that one works. We have another one back here. And then in the back, you want to make sure that your turn signals work. You guys can see the turn signals. This one is uh, not on because that turn signal is not on, obviously. But uh, those will be my brake lights. Right up here, you have the three uh, back lights as well. This one is something that this trailer has right there. Will they use it? I don't know. But this is what I was talking about. So this wall right here, this FRP, those three trailer lights in the front, that's where you have access to those. And once you put this last piece up right here, 
you might not have access to those so you want to make sure that all of them work before you cover that up because to fix that it gets a little bit more tricky and you want to make sure that all your trailer lights are working because they could pull you over for not having the correct indicators on your trailer and that's never a fun day because they'll ticket you and then you still have to fix it so you might as well get it right the first time all your blinkers brakes and all your side marker lights are working i think this one's working over here too right over here right there you guys can kind of see the blurriness but there you go so make sure you check that very important part of your trailer or your truck that all your lights work that's sign off for this part of the video